Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder. Welcome to another episode of Ask Skill Builder, where you send in the questions and we do our very best to try and answer them. So let's go straight to the first question. Hi, Roger. My name is Will. I've got a problem. We just moved house, bought this nice house, and they've got a downstairs bathroom conversion type thing built into the garage. This is it. That's the garage through there. This is the shower, shower room. It clogs up. The water fills up from the shower. It doesn't drain away quickly. If I take you into the garage, <clears throat> you'll see. It comes out of there and it goes into this uh, sunny shower product. Up this pipe, excuse my bad cameraman work, into this box in, across here, up here, I've taken this coven down to have a look at it, through there, and then into the conservatory, and into those white pipes there, behind that box in. It goes along here and into this. We've got a separate one for the toilet. And down there, as you can see, into the waste pipe. So it backs up into the shower. The toilet seems okay. Any advice? I'm guessing the pipes are too narrow. Well, Will. Your plumber says the pipes are too narrow. I doubt that very much because those pipes are a three quarter inch overflow, which is standard pipe work for running a sani flow into a main drain. The important thing is that you go up first and then once you've gone up, you go across and wherever you're gonna go. You don't go along and then try and go up. So what this is doing is it's actually pumping upwards first, which is absolutely great. And from that point on, it should just fall to the drain. Now, it looks to me as if it's perfectly adequate to do the job. I wouldn't go replacing that pipework. What I would do is something really quite obvious and simple, which is to lift the cover off that drain and have a look and see whether that is actually clogged up with hair because it would seem to me that the problem isn't with the pump but the pipe that goes from the shower waste there in the middle of the floor to the actual sani flow itself because once it gets past there as you've said it's got no problem with the basin so why should it have a problem with the shower the shower doesn't seem particularly powerful it looked like it might be a pump shower but not you know not one of a really powerful one so the flow rate shouldn't be horrendous you should be able to cope with that flow rate with that three quarter inch pipe on a pump so what I'd do is I'd lift that cover out, I'd have a good look at the waste pipe, probably uncover it, couple it from the other end, and just push a rod through or even get a wet and dry vacuum cleaner and make sure that there's no hair there because a lot of people will testify that if you have a shower, those shower wastes get clogged up with hair within just a few weeks. You know, maybe it's one of those jobs you've got to do every three or four weeks to keep it flowing. So if that hasn't been done for a while, if the people that sold you that property haven't done it, and since you've been in there, you haven't had that cover off and, and checked the, the trap for for hair and, and build up of debris, then I think that's the most likely cure. I don't think you need to worry about the pipe work coming out of the sunny shower. I think that's absolutely as it should be. It looks all right to me anyway. And uh, that would be the quicker and easier option. Sounds obvious, but I think it's probably all that it is. And here's a question from Adrian Reynolds. Now this has got to be in our top 10 most asked questions of all time. When I did my radio show at LBC uh, radio for several years it came up almost week after week and this is black mold it's got black mold around the windows it's got a nice little video for us to look at here hi skill builder we've got a bit of a problem with mold around our windows um, particularly in the reveals um, I've been scrubbing it and scrubbing it to try and with bleach to try and clear it and it keeps coming back and I've successfully taken the paint and some wallpaper and chunks of plaster off while I've been 
scrubbing away. This is the main bedroom, uh, which is the worst affected. Um, the mould also goes around the kind of the top of the wall, just under the cove in there and into the corner. That's an external wall out there. Um, there is cavity fill insulation. The front windows aren't so bad and get under the blind here. There's a bit of black mould just at the top. Um, and our two children's bedroom have it as well. The middle bedroom with no only one external wall is, isn't very bad actually. And then our daughter's room, which again has an external wall to the left there, just up above the blind there. We get a mould all across the, across the top. And again, I've managed to push through the, uh, the very thin plaster there and to the little cavity above the window, whether that should be full or not full, I don't know. Um, so just wonder if you've got any top tips to sort mould out around windows or window reveals and if it could be a problem with the the cavity wall insulation. Um, I should go outside now and take some photos of the outside for you. Okay, here's the back of the house. Uh, the window to the right there is my daughter's room. And then this window here was the first bedroom we looked at. Uh, it's built in the mid 70s I think. Um, so I come round here, the extension's going on. Uh, I'll show you into where they've cut out for the new cavity. So we've got all this white, which is actually dry and clean. When I cut in for the block and beam it was a bit wet at the bottom. Um, but only at the very bottom, if that's relevant. Um, so yeah, there's that corner there was the worst mouldy spot. I think the fascias are dirty from soot from the chimney. We've got the log burner going. So you can suck around that corner. Another look up there. So that fascia all along our window is filthy, but I think it just needs a clean. And there's flaky paint on the uh, the soffit. Well, you can see that that mould is everywhere around all those windows and what's happening there is that there's a little bit of cold bridging. They're getting a bit of a cold surface there off the window and you can also see it's on top of the blind as well in that window reveal. So it proves it's not anything that's actually coming through from outside. What's happening is that he's got PVC windows there, double glazed, sealed up, you know, draft proofed, everything, but there's no trickle ventilation. So that means that any moisture, any humidity in the house is not going to escape. It's gonna condense on those surfaces. So what he's really got to do is to put in some kind of extraction to get rid of that moisture, to put in a better extractor fan in the bathroom and to start pulling that moist air out of the building. What you can get is a central unit that goes in the loft, which is really a heat recovery unit. It's a ventilation unit. And what it does is it takes the heat from the air that it's extracting and when it chucks the air out to the outside with all the moisture it recovers some of that heat so when it's pulling air in from the outside it's warming it up slightly as it comes in so that's a pretty efficient thing and you can run those just on trickle some of them you can run for about 20 pence a week which is nonsense really it's such a small price to pay for getting rid of that that mold the other thing you could do is put in a dehumidifier but i would recommend that you extract that moisture at source but it is purely down to condensation it's one of those blights of modern homes because we don't have chimneys we don't have the kind of drafts and ventilation that we used to have and all that moisture is just floating around the house building up building up first cold surface it finds it condenses on that and that's where the mold comes from it's as simple as that people get it in the backs of wardrobes they get it in all kinds of places now you, you said in, in the video that it's your daughter's bedroom there it is a pretty unhealthy environment especially for kids so you need to sort it out you can't live with mold in your house like that because it has a lot of bad properties which can injure your health so the sooner you sort it out with good extraction and maybe a bit of dehumidifying the better so here we've got a, a little one picture and uh, an email from zach hake and zach is 
building some bathrooms here. He's, he's put stud work up, which looks pretty tidy actually. Got to say, and now he wants to put on the elements board and do the job as per our videos using the same specification. But he said that he's looked around for bathroom fitters, you know, plumbers and so on. He said and he's not very impressed. They don't really want to carry the job out to the standard that he's after. And he wonders what he can do about that, who he can get hold of now. It is a problem because we're finding that there's a lot of resistance among these guys who just want to slash in a bit of plasterboard and do the job on the fly and cheap and don't want to take the trouble to do the job properly. And what we're trying to do is put together a national network of bathroom installers that uh, we can recommend to you. People over uh, around the country that will do a job to a decent standard and give you a proper tanked bathroom that won't cause you problems in the future. So at the moment, it's hard for us to actually recommend anybody in your area, but you've got a specification. Quite honestly, Zach, if you've done that job already, then what I would be tempted to do if I were you is to put the board up, you know, because quite honestly, you can board that bathroom out pretty quickly yourself and uh, have that ready for the plumbing. If the plumbing is the bit you can't do, then you can put, call the plumber in, but at least you have established the kind of standard you want and hopefully they can go forward. But I agree, it's not a very satisfactory situation where you've got a good specification, you want the job done properly and you just can't find the people to do it. So uh, we'll do what we can to solve that over the coming year, but immediately at this point, all I can say is just keep shopping around and see who you can find. If you want to send us your location, we might just be able to find somebody in your area to do the job. So this one's from Chris Stevens and he's he wants to put an island unit in and he wants an extractor fan over the top and he said it's sod's law that there's going to be a joist in the way wherever he wants to put that extractor ducting and run it out to outside now i know this problem of old you know you've got a a, a big ducting there that you want the extractor fan to go on to and there's a joist in the way just you want to mount it centrally over the top of of your hob but because of the joist, you can't do that. And also the ducting, if it's going counter to the way the joists are running, you can't sink it up inside the joist. And he said, can he modify the joists in some way to accommodate the ducting? And the answer to that is no. Do not try to modify those joists. Those joists are structural. They're there to support the floor above and you really can't start hacking into the underside of them. You will weaken them and you will cause problems in the future. So leave those joists alone. What I would do and what works very well indeed is to put a little bit of a false ceiling in. You can drop down a section of ceiling that you can put the extractor fan in and put the the ducting all the way to the outside and just run that piece of box work ceiling as a slightly lower ceiling than the rest of it and it looks perfectly okay a lot of people do it you'll find loads and loads of photographs on the internet to help you do that on pinterest and all sorts and it's the way to do it you can't chop into joists and you can't try running that if you're lucky and the joists are running the way you want them to then happy days but all too often it doesn't work out like that and the bit of false drop ceiling is the way forward. Now, a few weeks ago, we had an email from Ian Little who had a problem with his mum's room thermostat on the central heating, and it was playing up and doing all kinds of weird things and switching the heating on when they didn't want it on and so on. And I was suggesting various things, but quite honestly, I think I missed a bit of a trick here. And we've subsequently had some suggestions in, and here's a suggestion. Uh, that is coming from Richard Matzak. Now, Richard is saying that uh, he had a very similar problem to this and he actually found that it was using exactly the same frequency as his neighbor's wireless thermostat. So it was basically his neighbor's thermostat which was switching his heating on and off. What, what he did is he actually took these little tags out the back. They've got these little jumpers if you like and you can pull those out and you can reconfigure to a different frequency so that if you find that there's a clash with your neighbors or somebody down the road and you can just pull those tags out and you can change the frequency that it transmits on. It's much the same as you do with dip switches for 
uh, burglar alarms and so on and by doing that you can get yourself onto a different wavelength to your neighbour and hopefully solve the problem. So just a little tip there from Richard and that's great because I did miss that as an option and uh, it would seem quite an obvious one to do. So here's a slightly unusual question from Ryan Thorpe. He's a brickie and he's just gone out on big sites. He was working with a gang of brickies but because of money troubles and all the rest of it he decided to go and work on the big sites on his own and he's now finding that on his own he can't really get the work he needs to have a laborer or be part of a gang now very often what you find is you get two brickies or sometimes even three brickies and one laborer and they work as a little gang and they can pick up work but if you go out on your own and you haven't got your own laborer who's going to knock up for you so a lot of sites want those little units those tight knit units now he said what he really needs to find is somebody who could be a labourer, this is in the Lincolnshire area and um, he said he needs somebody who can work as a labourer, maybe as a labourer stroke improver, in other words getting on the trowel when he isn't knocking up muck, getting on the trowel and uh, and he can, he can learn the trade as he goes which you would have thought was an absolutely perfect opportunity for somebody. So hopefully there's somebody out there who will see this or know somebody who's looking to get a start as a brickie and maybe they go to college and learn a bit there but it would seem to me to be a, a a really good opportunity for somebody that wants to get into the building trade wants to learn a trade such as bricklaying and wants somebody to work with because at the moment he's working on his own and he's struggling but his work looks good i mean look at these pictures they, they look fine and uh it's such a shame that that's the way that employment goes, but that's that's the way it is. Unfortunately, they do want gangs of brickets. That's what they're hiring. So we'll be back with more Ask Skill Builders. Keep your questions coming in. Uh, my video editor says make them as short as possible, but I like a long question. Don't worry, I'll ramble on. If you want to send in 20 photographs, you send in 20 photographs. We'll be pleased to have them. The more the merrier and keep them coming.